Boy, oh boy, I love Revit so much. It is Autodesk's answer for architectural design. And if you are using Revit or have an interest in using Revit, I would like to be your personal Revit guru, the Revit guy that you turn to uh, for all of your needs. Today, we're gonna to look at creating a stair inside of the Revit software uh, with some very simple and basic information. Revit will create a complex, complete three-dimensional modeled stair design for you. And we'll look at an example of that today. Thank you for joining us. Circulation panel, choosing the stair tool, opens up the modify create stair tab. And in the component panel, you have all different kinds of stair types. You have straight stair. Start looking at the straight stair run type first. I'm going to choose the assembled stair design. And again, the base level height is level one and top level height is level two, which is a 10 foot floor to floor height requiring 18 risers currently with an 11 inch tread depth. And it's calculating a six inch and 171 by 256 of an inch for the riser height. Come over here to the floor plan, left click to start here and notice as you move your cursor, you can count the number of risers that are being created and how many are remaining, up to 18 currently. Left click to place that and it says riser 1 through 18. Click the green check mark to finish still and it creates that stair from the base. Starts with a full uh, solid line work and then at the cut line it shows a cut mark and also the lines above that are overhead dashed lines. Going to a 3D view. So that was creating a stair from one point to the next. Again, it creates a full three-dimensional stair design, including railings, stringers, treads, and risers. Continuing with that condition, start the stair tool again. All same conditions. Start a run of stairs going up to here, say nine risers and left click, and then move up and over slightly and left click again. Notice this creates a landing segment between those two automatically. As I move my cursor around, you can see how the landing preview is changing its orientation. It will continue to readjust that landing design as you move your cursor around. I'm gonna just create it here and left click to create the next segment. Click the green check mark to finish. And again, that creates another run of stairs. In 3D, you can see that's created a switchback stair design where the stairs go up move over on the landing and then go up to the final position. Stair tool again. Same conditions once more. Left click, move up nine risers. Left click again, come over here and create another set of stairs going back in the opposite direction, creating a more switchback stair design. So it moves the stairs up, goes over and then comes back to the same location instead of exiting on the opposite side. Once again, Revit does a lot of modeling work for you. Stair tool again. Next, we'll switch to the full step spiral design. Left click to create a center point, and then the first radius I can create is a two foot six design. Left click and it creates a full set of spiral stairs. Click the green check mark to finish and go to 3D. And that creates a completely three-dimensional circular stair design, one of my favorite types. Each of the treads are exactly segmented and cut in a wedged triangular shape at exactly the same design. And the center is a almost helical stringer support design. And the railing follows. In a lot of cases, you'd probably transition this inter center support stringer to a pole and just have the outside railing. But again, this design includes that, but you can replace it and change it out as needed for your design. But that's a lot of complex geometry that you don't have to create yourself. Revit does that for you. Stair tool again, then so going to the center and spiral case. Once again, choose a center point and then an initial radius. I'll continue with two foot six. The difference here is you actually do place the risers 
as you're counting, and it's counted up to 14 rises currently with four remaining. And as I left click and I move over here with my cursor, it's gonna create a landing between those two segments. Notice how far and complex I can create this landing. It can be at any distance and any length away from that position to complete that stair design. So if I move it way up here and I left click and I create four more risers and left click again, this landing and bridge condition is all part of the same stair design and it can create that for you. It's still up to you as the designer to make sure the underside head height works correctly for safety purposes, but Revit will create whatever you desire. So all of that design is created within the same singular tool. Taking a look at this stair first, I can select that stair and look at the Modify tab. I have an Edit Stair option. Edit that and it turns the design of the stair on. And I have the ability to select each run and length of landing. On the landing, select the landing condition. Again, you have to convert that separately to a sketched outline. And you're using boundary and stair path lines. As long as you use a boundary line and follow around the perimeter of the design, it will create whatever you need as long as you follow the rules. If I trim those together, and then click Finish, I can make a highly volumetric area on that landing. Down at the base of the stair, convert that to a sketch again, edit sketch, and at the base I will create a bullnose design of riser lines with an arc shape. On the last tread, put a bullnose uh, arc on both sides and then pull the last boundary line back to the previous riser line. And then click the green check mark to finish and that creates a bullnose design. And then click finish. And when I tilt that up to look at it in 3D, you can see that the base of the stair has a bullnose stair design. It has pulled the stringer support back as well as the railing. And the landing has completely expanded out to be that full shape. And the railing will follow all of those design changes automatically. Going to the stair tool, component panel, choosing this create sketch option. And using boundary, riser, and stair path lines, you can generate the design of the stair that you're looking for creating riser lines, and using the pick line tool, I will pick the first leg, second leg, and then I actually run a length of riser line against the face of the wall, and then I create a boundary line that goes from the edge of this stair back to the wall and make sure everything is trimmed together without any extra overlapping lines. Once that finishes, look at this in a 3D view. Set the elevation height of this correct. Coming up that full height and creating a custom stair design, meeting up to that landing and reaching the door one foot higher. Okay, so I have this floor plan open. Modify create stair tab, component panel, choosing the straight stair run type. Looking at the properties, type selector drop down list. I'm gonna choose the assembled stair type. In this case, it is called hotel stairs. And it has a base level of level one up to top level two. And a desired height for that is 18 feet tall which is the floor to floor height. And it says based on the stair calculation of seven inch maximum riser height, it's calculating it's needing 31 risers and a riser height of six thirty one thirty seconds. And it also has a tread depth of 11 inches, starting at riser number one. Choose the straight stair again, all of the same properties apply. I'm gonna start in this lower left hand corner and create my first run upstairs 13 foot 9, 
left click and that creates 15 risers from 1 to 15 up to this point. Come over here to the right hand side of this edge and it creates a landing between those two points automatically because I have this option on that says automatic landing created. When two stair runs are separated it creates a landing between them automatically. And then run the rest of the stairs up to this amount. It says 16 more risers and zero remaining. Notice how the number is changing as I increase the length of the stairs. That is placing the number of risers at a time up to 31 risers total for 18 feet floor to floor height. Left click and it places that from riser 16 up to 31. Then go up to the modify tab and choose the green check mark to finish and that completes the stair creation. So notice in the floor plan that it creates the stairs fully and intact from the up location showing where it would exist on the floor above. In dashed lines it shows an overhead condition and then the solid lines in the area below where the cut line exists on that floor level. Going into the level 2 location you can see a tiny bit of railing poking out from this position. The blue area currently is where the floor exists. Right now the floor is extending over the stair area and we would want to cut that out. There are a couple of methods to do that. You can create a shaft opening. You can cut the floor boundary in the area where the stair exists, which is what we'll do next. Coming over to this floor plan, selecting the floor line, go to the Modify Floor tab and choose Edit Boundary. Changing the sketch line so that the floor cuts across the face of the exit stairs here. Using boundary lines, I'll draw a straight line across here where it meets this position of the wall. Use the Trim and Extend a Corner tool and join those corners together. I also need to extend this line up the wall and then trim that as well. Once the sketch is completed, click the green check mark to finish and the flooring is now cut back so that the stairs exist in that shaft opening. That would need to be done at each floor level or you can use a shaft opening as I mentioned before. Many ways to do the same task. Looking at this situation in a three-dimensional view, which I have created here, I have cut back the three-dimensional view so that I can only see the stair location. And I can see that the stair exits up here at the top of the floor. Showing the stair coming from the second floor level down to the first landing, wrapping around this area and going back down to the floor and exiting. The railing itself is currently a picketed configuration. I can change that using the properties. I have a drop down list where I can change it to different designs. And one of those designs needs to be a single handrail that is wall mounted. I don't have one of those created, so I'm going to go to a rectangular handrail type, choose edit type, and duplicate this type design, labeling this as handrail wall mount. In the rail structure panel, click on that and it has no information in here because it's just a horizontal rail with pickets. Go into the ballast replacement area, choose edit, and at the top there is the regular baluster pattern. Using a three quarter inch square baluster, we're going to remove that by changing it back to none. And the posts at the base are also going to be removed, so we set those baluster families to none as well. Once all of this is changed, click OK, and that turns it into a wall-mounted railing by itself. The center item is still a picketed rail. You can also exchange that and make it a guardrail condition. Again, this is a horizontal pipe design, and it has a larger, taller handrail and then an inset handrail that follows around the perimeter. So railings interacted with stairs are very complex and can be uh, customized in many different ways. In fact, I'll expand this top rail out, giving it an extension at the base and at the top.
so it extends out and back. Typically required by code. Do the same thing on the other side. Extension with a tread depth plus 12 inches, extending that out as well. Stairs are one of the most uh, complex areas of the Revit software, but with some very minimal amounts of information, you can get highly complex data and three-dimensional modeling content automatically created for you within the Revit software. I hope you enjoyed that uh, small excerpt from Autodesk's Revit on um, creating of stairs. Uh, we'd like to welcome you back to join us with our next example of ways that you can use Revit to enhance your architectural designs and the ease of which Revit can do that. This channel is sponsored by Imaginet Technologies. With over 20 years of experience and more than 100 industry experts, Imaginet is well equipped to assist with any needs for software, training, implementation, including Productivity Now, a video training resource for many types of industry leading software. Check out the available licensing packages at Imaginet.com. Contact Imaginet today and mention this channel to get a special offer. Check out our previous videos below. Comment below and tell us more information you'd like to see covered in the Revit software. Like and subscribe to this channel so you can get the latest updates for each time that we post new videos in tutorials on how to use the Revit software. Don't miss it.